This is like choose your own adventure. I'm loving it. Back to some OG content for you. What's better than shopping your closet as the seasons change, as we start to feel like maybe our wardrobes are lacking and we start to feel that little urge to go shopping for things we probably don't even need? So to remedy that, I am shopping my closet for three looks that I found, some street style looks that were found outside of the most recent runway shows from Paris Couture Week 2023 to Milan Fashion Week Spring Summer 2024. So these are some really interesting looks that I hope will stretch the clothes that I already have in my closet. This is such a fun exercise to do if you are feeling a little bit in a funk with your closet, if you just want to restyle what you've already got, if you want to practice conscious consumption and shop less. Taking the time to shop your closet and rejig what you've already got is such a good way to do that and often I find it's more rewarding and more empowering than when I go out and buy something that I don't actually need. Before we jump into it, I'm going to break down each look into elements of style. Things like texture, proportions, silhouettes, colors, styling tweaks, like how colors are being used and all that fun stuff. And I really like to do this before because it prevents me from carbon copying a look. And it also helps me decouple style and fashion from consumption. When we start to see clothing, our closets, clothing in stores as elements of style, then we really start to see clothing as true tools to express our own sense of self and our own creativity through clothing rather than just garments that maybe we just keep wearing and that we get tired of and that we feel we have to constantly replenish. If you are wondering how to actually put this into practice and you want to practice becoming a more conscious consumer, you will love my live digital events. I have a workshop coming up on September 30th between 1 and 3 p.m. EST. It is live and virtual, so you can hopefully join from anywhere. I'll leave all the tickets down down below, but we do this exercise like in today's video, but we have two live guests and we shop their closets based on inspiration looks that you'll get in advance. But I just find that doing this exercise, especially with other people, can really help you develop this skill because creativity, in my opinion, is a muscle and the more we use it, the more we practice it, the better we get at it. Okay. Let's break these looks down. This first look is from the Milan Spring Summer 2024 shows. I realize we can only see three quarters of the outfit, but I thought this was really cool because there's so much going on up top and in the accessories. So I figure we can just like choose your own adventure for the rest of it. Here's the breakdown that I'm gonna give this. I first like to identify what's the vibe here. There's a little bit of playfulness with the use of color and the cool accessories, but it does feel a little bit like casual because of the denim. It feels very free and easy, but I still think it's also, I want to say a little bit artistic. Perhaps that's also with the playful, simply because there's a really interesting juxtaposition with that square, very structured bag. So the next thing I like looking at are the silhouettes, because this is definitely going to change depending on how I want to dress my body versus how my inspiration is dressing. So the silhouette here is actually, I would say, pretty boxy, off the body, you know, the cardigan is fitted, but it's got a really just like a straight boxy line. It's not tapered. It's not super like form or figure hugging. And it looks like the denim is also just a pretty standard straight leg fit. Fits a little bit off the body. It's not too tight. And then it's not like this oversized. So we're getting actually a really beautiful figure flattering silhouette, but I wouldn't say like too, too tight. I also think proportions are really interesting. However, because we can't see the bottom of the jeans and what shoes she's paired with this, it's a little bit more difficult to talk about proportion. But what I find interesting is that the cardigan is that it's kind of hitting her right in the middle of her body. But in order to keep like some really interesting length in terms of the proportion and that visual, she's got the cardigan unbuttoned with only one button, which I think is a really cool styling tweak that I'm definitely going to pay attention to. Something else in terms of proportion is that the denim is relatively high mid-waisted. So I think that's really good because the cardigan is boxy. So it's bringing in a little bit of that like nice 
balance. I also really like the use of color here. I find the baby blue from the denim pulls beautifully into this printed cardigan. And the last element that I'm seeing here is more of like a little styling hack and it's choosing a purse that is probably very counter to the whole vibe of this look. Like it's black, it's structured, it's strict. And we've got it paired with all of these like fun colors and textured accessories. It's just kind of a really interesting look. So with all of that in mind, I'm gonna jump in my closet and see what I can pull together. Okay, look what I did. I am wildly impressed with myself right now. <laughs> I originally tried my cardigan. Let me grab it for you. This one here, but it was too boxy and I couldn't bunch up the back to create a little bit more of like a fitted silhouette because there was just too much fabric. It was just too thick. This is the peril of trying to copy a look exactly. I could have gone with this and just like left it and it would have been mediocre, but instead I went with a trusty button up because this is like what's a staple in my closet. I have the high waist so the proportions are good, even though it's very long, right? So I didn't wanna keep it just unbuttoned and long because that would have really like cut my legs short. And I love the open here because this is creating a really beautiful elongated proportion. I tied a little knot at the back to give me this like nice fit structure rather than go for the structured purse I wanted to go with something that was opposite of my button-up because I've got the structure and the crispness now through this right so instead of going with a purse that was structured, I felt like that would be like too much, too heavy on the button down, too crisp, too trying too hard. So I went with the fanny and it's this really great like forest green. These colors actually look so beautiful together. I think it's because the green is so deep. And uh, I threw on my slingbacks because I wanted to balance out the roughness of the denim. I wanted to contrast with the random fanny pack. For accessories, we saw that she had like a really cool textured necklace, which I liked. Again, it adds to that playfulness. So I've just got this really cool yellow necklace here, which maybe we're not getting the texture that we had in our original inspiration, but we are getting like a really interesting play on color, yellow, red, green. She's also got like a heavier pair of sunnies, but I think that comes with the weight of the cardigan, like that fuzzy sort of wool feeling, whereas my button up is crisp, it's light still, it's cotton. So I'm gonna go with these vintage sunnies instead to kind of keep in with that lightness happening. I really liked this next look. This is from Paris Couture Week 2023. And I just thought it was so good because if you look at it, yes, the shirt has these fancy crisscross straps, but ultimately this look is really made Made up of basics and we can probably recreate this with what we've already got by playing with silhouettes and some of our basic pieces. So I liked how this was like a play on the classics. Some of the other elements I can see here are that obviously it's more about the styling hacks. I think layering is really present here with like the turtleneck under the button up, which, you know, we've all seen, but I think this is a really creative use of that layering with the wrap over a turtleneck. Little bit of like a high contrast look with the star white on top and the black shoe. Like denim is also a really great neutral. So we're kind of using that denim to ground the whole look. Otherwise, it's a fairly simple outfit. I love the juxtaposition in terms of the silhouette, something really tight and form fitting on top with something voluminous, baggy, a little bit rougher texture on the bottom. In terms of proportion, there's a nice high waist with the big baggy pants. So I think again, this is really nice at sort of bringing in a bit of a lengthy visual. But if we're looking at the denim, she's got a really solid cuff at the bottom with the black shoe. So even though our eye is being drawn down because of these two elements, the high waist as well as the fitted waist is what creates that almost like elongating effect. That's why we're not really losing her shape here. There's a lot of definition in this look. In terms of the style vibe for this, I don't know. I want to say like just cool. I think this is a really cool look. I don't know if that's if that's like a good descriptor, but I'm going to use it. I think classic is really cool, but also a little bit like modern and fresh because of the styling of these basic pieces, as well as the use of that baggier silhouette, which is really on trend right now. Don't know how I feel about this one. It's definitely
definitely an outfit that I would wear in real life. I really liked the idea of layering, like layering a turtleneck under a button up. And these are the only two same color. Like I only have a black, I only have one black turtleneck. And I really like how it was like the tone on tone. I didn't want to do a black turtleneck under a white button up. I've already done that. I know it looks great, but this I'll be honest, feels a little heavy, you know? Isn't that amazing? On camera, this looks fantastic. In real life, I do find it's a little bit heavy. That's why I didn't add a belt because there's already like, it's also pretty visually hefty on top. I went with a cool gunmetal cowboy boot underneath here because I like how it's low. The hem falls nice and low so we get like a little bit of this like slouchy. This is the purse I would pair with it. I like that it's a little bit heavy. Yes, it's navy. Actually, navy and black I love. Great combination. So this is definitely something I can see myself wearing for travel if I really want to stretch my pieces for like an everyday. I think this is such a good look because you can like take it out for dinner, go to a meeting in the day, and you still look pretty solid. Finally, I believe this was from Copenhagen Fashion Week, this look. This is Grease Genum. We love Grease. She's been on here before. I mean, not live and in person, but as our inspiration. I love a shorts and tall boot look for this time of year. I have about 2.5 seconds out of the entire year to wear this kind of look. The weather is perfect for this now, so I really wanted to see this. We have a bunch of textures at play. It looks like a suede skirt, a leather blazer, and then this like super silky camisole with lace. So there's just like a whole bunch of style mixes and contrasting textures, but also also a whole bunch of different styles in general. We've got this like lingerie paired with an edgier, like textured blazer, more fall inspired, the boots, the suede, all kinds of things happening. And then she's got it like really grounded in all of these neutral colors. And I think keeping it in this really nice tonal palette, the browns, the beiges, even the boots are brown. All of this helps it go a little bit easier on the eye. Otherwise, I think a lot of these elements, all of that juxtaposition that would be just a little bit too much. Style vibe. I don't know. I feel like she's just so stylish. I think Grease Genum is a style vibe. Is that cheating? I don't know. Probably not at all like our inspiration, but in a way the elements that I took were the interesting proportions of having something long and voluminous and bigger over something short and in my case not as tight. I didn't go with like a little mini skirt, which I could have because I was really feeling the shorts. So that's just personal preference. Also because I have something so voluminous on top. I didn't want to have something too fitted on the bottom. I wanted it to feel a little bit more balanced. So I grabbed the shorts that come out a little instead of the super fitted mini. I don't have a leather blazer. And to me, this was really about the texture play. So what I thought I would do was inverse the slouch versus fitted tailored piece. So instead of having the tailored piece be the jacket and the flouncy slouchy be the under layer, I flipped it and I've got a super fitted, this is just like a nice little striped top fitted. And then to add that slouch, cause I do think this look needed a little bit of slouch in order to not feel so fussy. I've got this vintage oversized denim jacket. Got a solid boot, which we love. The Loewe puzzle and a hefty pair of frames. I wanted a, a heavier pair of frames to balance out the heaviness and the volume of the jacket. So that is what I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, I so appreciate it. Don't forget I have tickets to my live digital event, Shop Your Closet, literally this, but with two people who are way cooler than me. So it's really fun. I will leave all the details for that in the description box below. If you like this video or if you learned something new, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, wonderful rest of your week. Thank you again for being here and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Ciao.